This video is the fifth of a six video series where we are building a computer vision game that you can play using hand gestures. No keyboard or mouse is necessary. We have so far fetched the media pipe model from Google onto our own browser environment. We have been able to detect hands using it and move HTML components like the rocket here using hand gestures. We are also detecting collision with these infinite boulders that keep falling down from above. And in this video, we'll build game overlay to show screen flashes when there is a collision, we'll also count miles to keep score. So first of all, I'll create a game info overlay component for this and I'm going to create it in the components directory as usual. So I'm going to right click new file game info overlay dot TSX and I'm going to use the ES7 plus snippet TSRAFCE to get a boilerplate react component. And in the input property, I want to receive the info which is going to be a JSON object that will be showing on the page. So I'm going to write info as any. I'm going to destructure it here, info. Now in the page.tsx file, I'm going to import this at the bottom of the page, just within the main tag, game info overlay, and it takes an input property, which is info, which is going to be a JSON object. So here we're going to pass a bunch of state variables and I did not want to create separate input properties for each of them. So I'm going to pass all of them as part of this JSON object. So one of the things that we want to show is a loading indicator when these models are loading. As you know, that is the responsibility of the hand recognizer component. And this hand recognizer component communicates using the set hand results callback and it can set this is loading key in the JSON object. That way it sends back the information to the page.tsx file. So in the set hand results function, we can see that we are already setting this is loading state, but it seems that we haven't created that state variable to store it in the page.txx component. So for that, I'm going to create a state variable, state snippet is loading, and the initial value is going to be false. And in the hand results callback, I'm going to say set is loading, is equal to result dot is loading so that way whenever this call is made from the hand recognizer component this is going to set the is loading property that is the state variable of this home page component and that state variable we can pass into the game info overlay to show any kind of loading indicator so i'm going to send that information is loading we're also going to send the is detected which is basically again set by the hand recognizer component in the same function set hand results which basically communicates the fact whether or not both the hands are being detected in the webcam feed or not now let me go into the game info overlay component let's destructure this two parameters that we sent in this json object so i'm going to add const is loading and is detected coming from info now inside this game info overlay i'm going to replace this content and for the div since it will be a overlay on top of everything whatever is on the page so for that i'm going to give it some class name so i'm going to say absolute z is equal to 30 h screen with screen flex item center so that if we want to show any kind of text like game over or pause or even the loading indicator everything are center aligned so justify center now inside this i'm going to check when it is loading so is loading when it is true then i'm going to show a loader icon that is going to come from lucid react that icon pack that we have already installed and i'm going to give it a size of 80 now just to test let me set it to true first now we can see that the loading indicator is there just to rotate it i'm going to use the tailwind css class animate spin that way it is going to rotate so it is only going to show when it is loading so it is going to be is loading now if you refresh we can see for time when uh, the model is loading we can see that the loader indicator is there if it is not loading and and is not detected then we are going to tell the user that the game has been paused and so for that i'm going to write a div inside that i'm going to write paused and give it some class names text text to excel font extra bold now if we go back we can see that the paused is there since we our hands are not detected if we bring up our hand we can see that the game starts and the paused is not showing and as soon as we take our hands down we can see that the game has paused now i'm just going to give it an animate ping and also i'm going to change the font of the page and i'm going to do it for the whole page so i'm going to go to the layout.tsx file and next yes when we created this app it already came with this google's icon pack and i'm going to fetch a mono spaced font that is roboto mono and 
I'm going to have to instantiate that Roboto Mono and use that using this class name property. That way it is mono spaced and the paused is pinging. And whenever we bring up our hand, everything works as usual. And when we put down our hand, the game is paused. Now let's go ahead and show the indicator whenever there is a collision. So I'm going to go to the page.tsx file. And here we have created a variable that is is invincible. So during that time, we want to show a red box around this. Since this is a JavaScript variable, we want to use a state variable in this place. So I'm going to write state snippet. I'm going to just write is colliding and set it as false initially. And whenever we are setting this JavaScript variable, we want to just say set is colliding using the is invincible variable. So the same thing we'll do here as well after the timeout ends. We're going to set is colliding to false. Now we'll send back the state variable that we just created is colliding and in the game info overlay we'll be destructuring that is colliding and i want to show a red border for that i'm going to replace this text using tilde notation so first of all i'll wrap it in curly braces and then wrap it in tilde and then write the conditional check when it's colliding i'm going to say border hyphen 20 pixel i could write it like this like if else then add nothing but since it's only one condition then uh, i'm just going to use this ampersand ampersand operator so that i don't have to use the else block and also i'm going to give the color of the border which is border red 600 if we refresh you can see whenever we're colliding for one and a half second there is a red border that gives the indication that we are colliding now one thing here when the game is paused user does not know why exactly it got paused the reason is that his or her hands are not uh, being detected so rather than showing a text that bring your hands into the webcam feed uh, what i'm going to do is that i'm going to increase the width of this webcam feed just to give an indication or rather help the user to place his or her hands inside the webcam feed in a better way so for that i'm going to go to the page.tsx file and we already have the is detected state variable so using that we can add some kind of condition for the container of the hand recognizer so here we are specifying with 24 so here as well i will use the tilde notation so wrap it within the curly braces and then wrap it with tilde we can replace the double quotes and use the conditional check if is detected then use the usual width or use the double width if you refresh when our hands are not detected the webcam feed is much wider and when hands come up then this becomes smaller so that you can focus on playing the game now this transition is not very smooth so i'm just going to add some kind of animation here so i'm going to say transition all and duration 500 now if you refresh we can see that the webcam feed shrinks down smoothly and when you bring down our hand it comes back up smoothly now i want to show how many miles the rocket has traveled just to keep score so for that i'm going to create another state variable i'm going to call it distance and initialize it with value zero now whenever our hands are detected and the game is moving then only we want to count the distance that means we want to create a use effect hook where the dependency is going to be is detected so that means whenever the is detected state changes this code block is going to run and here we're going to check if is detected then i'm going to set an interval and we want to update the distance every 100 millisecond so i'm going to say set distance and it takes the previous value and we are going to return the previous plus one and to stop the counting we will have to clear the interval whenever the is detected state changes so for that i'm going to define uh, interval variable here distance interval as any and store that interval that we set in that interval variable distance interval and we are going to write return arrow function which basically does clear interval and pass that distance interval here so that means whenever the is detected state changes this is going to clear the old interval and it is going to set an interval only when the is detected state is true which is going to basically increment the distance every 100 millisecond by one now we'll pass along this distance state variable as well into our game info overlay component so distance and we'll destructure it here and we want to show it on the top right side of the screen so below this i'm going to write div and give it a class name position as fixed top six right six and inside i'm going to write distance using the tilde notation and dollar 
distance now if we refresh we can see that the distance is zero and when the game starts our distance is counting and when we bring down our hand the distance stops again when we resume it starts counting now as the next step we'll have to give this player a finite number of lives we'll also show the remaining number of lives for the player so for that i'm going to first create a javascript parameter let lives remaining as number and when the page loads that is the empty dependency array there we are going to initialize it lives remaining as four and now in the collision handler so this collision handler which is the function that each and every boulder calls in the event of a collision with itself here if it is not invisible then we are going to say lives remaining minus minus now the reason why i'm using a plain old javascript variable here and not a state variable is because state variables are set asynchronously by the react engine if i were to decrease uh, a state variable here by one and write in the next line check if the updated value is zero or not so as to determine if the game is over it is likely that i would still get the older value of the state variable because these state variables are set asynchronously in the back end by this react engine mainly to update the ui components for that reason i i prefer to use plain old javascript variables for plain old state management of my application and when we want to update the ui component i like to go for a state variable so right after we have decremented i'm going to check if lives remaining is less than equal to zero then i'm going to say then game over now to show this game over onto the game info overlay we want to pass along a state variable so for that i'm going to create two state variables one is for the lives remaining as well as whether or not it is game over or not so i'm going to go and create those two variables state snippet lives remaining state you have to set it as zero that is fine because in the use effect hook where we are setting the lives remaining there we are going to set the set live remaining state and we are always going to set it using the javascript variable so that we are not hard coding it and it is it becomes easy to read in my opinion so whenever we are setting this live rem lives remaining you are also going to set the state variable this is good for showing it on the ui component but not very good for such logical checks in the javascript code and for the game over i'm also going to create another state variable is game over initialize it with false and here inside the block i'm going to say set is game over is equal to true now we'll pass along these two information in the info object that is lives remaining state and is game over we'll destructure those two in the game info overlay lives remaining state is game over now to show how many lives are remaining i'm going to show that many rocket component on the top right side of the screen so for that i'm going to create a jsx array to show one rocket icon for each lives remaining so i'm going to add const lives this is going to be shown on the screen this is going to be a jsx array so i'm going to create a for loop and let i is equal to zero i less than lives remaining state i plus plus and inside the for loop i'm going to say lives dot push and we're going to push a jsx code that is going to be just the rocket icon that we used for the rocket component as well that came from lucid react and since this is going to go onto the page and react expects you to have unique key for multiple sibling elements so for that i'm going to write key and i is going to be the unique key for this i'm going to give it a size of 20 and for the color i'm going to use the same color that we used for the rocket component so here we used fill red 600 i'm not going to give the rotation which was required because the rocket icon comes with a 45 degree tilt so we had to add minus 45 i'm just not going to add that for the lives remaining rocket icon so i'm going to go here and add the class name fill red 600 and under the distance covered i'm going to copy this and here just i'm going to use the jsx that we just built that is the lives and i'll have to give it top 12 so that it comes under the distance actually also i'll have to add flex and flex row here so that these are placed in row also i'll add some amount of space within it so i'll add gap of one that way we have the lives remaining now if you play this game we can see that each collision is reducing our rockets on the top right and we'll also want to show when the game is over and we'll also want to stop the distance counter and stop the generation of the clouds now finally to show the game over first i'm going to make sure that we are not showing paused screen when the game is over even when the hands are not detected so here in the is detected i'm also going to add 
is not game over and for the is game over i'm going to show another div similar to this where i'm just going to write game over since we don't have any lives remaining our game over is showing but you can see that since our hands are not detected the game is paused and as soon as we bring up our hand our distance is counting so that uh, we need to fix so for that in the distance interval i want to run this code block even in the case of is going over state has changed so for that this interval should be only set when it is detected and it is not is game over now if you refresh we can play our game and our lives remaining is reducing every time there is a collision and our distance just stops even when the game is going on now we could stop the cloud generation and the cloud removal interval as well when the game is over or we could leave it this way so that the user can play in kind some kind of zen mode but i'm going to just stop the cloud generation so i'm going to go to this uh, use effect block where we are setting the generation also we are setting the removal interval here i'm going to also add the is game over state in the dependency array so this code block is going to run even when the is game over state changes and here i'm going to add the same check when it is detected and it is not is game over then only go ahead and create this generation interval as well as the removal interval now if you refresh same thing happens our lives reduce and finally when the game is over we don't generate any clouds now one last thing in the collision handler as well here we are checking if it is not invincible then only we are setting the is colliding and all those things so we don't want to do any kind of collision detection when uh, rather we don't want to show this red border uh, when the game is already over although we are stopping the generation but even when the game is over then if some boulders are still falling then if you collide against it then if it shows the red border it is not a good user experience because the game is already over so that for that reason i'm also going to uh, add a check here that is and is is not game over then only go ahead and do the whole collision detection logic So you can see after the game is over even when we're colliding it does not show the red border and that's it for this video in the next video we'll add sound effects and background track for our game and dynamically change the sound profile whenever hands are not detected and finally deploy our game thank you for watching till the end and i'll see you in the next one